My lords, ladies and gentlemen, um, I have one complaint. It is a cruel and unusual punishment to ask me to speak after my dear friend Kofi Annan. Um, how do you follow that? I can, however, follow it by picking up one word that Kofi used. That uh, I think he used the phrase, Kofi, a dedicated servant to the global community. And that, I think, is the theme of what I'd like to say a few words. We called you, Robin Niblett said earlier on, a statesperson. And of course, it is the only word we have available to use. But it seems to me that the most important part of the extraordinary work that we celebrate tonight, that Belinda and the Foundation has done, is precisely that it is not confined to states. It operates on the global scene, on the international scene, um, beyond the reach of the state, and often in areas where the state finds it difficult to get to, frankly. The phrase that you're dedicated to, the foundation is dedicated to, is that all lives are of equal value. Can you imagine what kind of a world we might have, how much more peaceful it would be, how much more stable, if that very simple principle was enacted across the world in the way to which you, Melinda, and the Foundation are dedicated. There are all sorts of good reasons. You made it so easy for my fellow presidents, John, Sir John Major and Patricia Scotland, to choose a short lift which included your name, because it was just an outstanding set of achievements. I mean, the philanthropy itself has uh, saved very probably, ladies and gentlemen, millions of lives. That would be enough for us to honor your work. But actually, I think it's even more important than that. We were met the other day with Her Majesty the Queen when she opened the college to leadership. And afterwards, in a remarkable, very typically Chat Chatham House dinner, we sat down and we started to talk about what the post-Westphalian state world, you can only do that kind of thing in Chatham House, um, would look like. And the thought that occurred to us was that power no longer lies within the framework of the nation state, subject to its accountability and responsible to its laws. That we have assembled a world on the basis that it is the Westphalian nation state that is the prime mover. And yet this is not so. I venture to say that there's probably now more power that lies in the global arena, in the international space, than lies within the institutions of the nation state. That it is at that international level, oblivious of the borders and fronters of nation states, that so much of the destiny of our world is decided. This is where the mass information exchange of the internet takes place. This is where the mass systems of travel deliver human beings around the world. This is where the mass speculation takes place that can sometimes, and one time very recently, unbalance the entire world economy. This is where, in this space, it is where disease is transmitted, and so that Ebola in West Africa becomes a problem for us. Swine flu in Mexico becomes a problem for Heathrow the day after. And yet, and yet we do not bring to that space the systems of government and the systems of law and order and the systems of governance. It's that space that contains other things that we like, entertainment and news and mass travel. But it's also the things we don't like that occupy there for criminality and terrorism and disease also occupies that space. And it seems to me that it is one of the defects of the Westphalian nation state that it finds it very difficult, effectively, to operate there. But that's where you operate, because you have proved in your foundation that philanthropy, too, can occupy that space. It is also possible to act internationally in a philanthropic way, to make those partnerships that Kofi referred to with private industry, in order to make things happen. 
which our other institutions probably cannot do in such an effective way. And so I think we celebrate not an extraordinary act of philanthropy here, but a genuine beacon shining into a turbulent and very fragile and frighteningly disturbed world. Institutions that reach beyond the state simply to make things better. And that, it seems to me, is one of the reasons why we are so proud to honor what you have done, not just because of the individual achievements, but because of the model that sets working in an arena where others cannot work. What was that phrase? All lives are of equal value. If only we could make that live. There was a great poem written by that remarkable Indian poet, Rabindranath Tagore. He wrote it, by the way, in 1905, and it's called The Celebration of Diversity. We all like to celebrate diversity today. It's quite fashionable to do so. It wasn't in 1905. And the poem, I think, might be a creed for our times. And it goes, we are all the more one because we are many. For we have left an ample space for love in the gap where we were sundered. Our unlikeness shines with the radiance of a common creation, like mountain peaks in the morning sun. It is our unlikeness that is the greatest revelation of both our humanity and the existence of the divine, whatever divine you happen to believe in. Your life, Melinda, your work, your achievement, which we celebrate and are proud to celebrate tonight, is dedicated to that proposition, encompassed in that phrase that you use as the central proposition of the foundation, all lives are of equal value. Thank you for giving us the opportunity today to honor that commitment.